a cool 66 degree weather tonight here at George P. Miller Stadium. Fall is just right around the corner and IUP football. In case you've missed the new additions here at the stadium, we have a new track that started up last May right after graduation and just finished days before this game. And the lines will be on next week and right next door to the track we have the new fences and gates all safety regulated so no audience members will be running towards the players. But now let's bounce over to the visitor side where we see the green temporary bleachers that will be a half the size of the final product. Right next to the temporary bleachers, we have the ADA compliant restroom because IUP is an all-inclusive university. I am Vincent Lowry, your play-by-play -play commentator for the second season. I'm here joined by my good friend. Hi guys, I'm Michael Grivna, back from my second season of IUP football. And you know, we did a lot of work putting the show on for you folks. And there's someone else who did a lot of work this offseason as well. It's new head coach Paul Tortorella. Yes, head coach Kurt Signetti is out and he is in Elon in North Carolina. Head coach Paul Tortorella has spent 22 seasons under the IUP defense as a defensive coordinator. He is a graduate of Slippery Rock University in 1985. In 2016, his defense ranked third in all of Division II football, and they had 24 total interceptions with 35 total turnovers. In six straight games last season, the IUP defense allowed less than 20 points. Against our rival, Slippery Rock, an offensive juggernaut, we held them to 19 points. And in our first game of the playoffs, we held Fairmont State, an offensive juggernaut as well, averaging 30 points per season to just under 13. And what I'm really interested in, Steve, Annie, is how P P uh, Coach Tortorella, he has a very good defensive mind coach, but what he can do on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how he handles the team in its entirety and really willing to see how he takes on the Ashland Eagles. Now, let's, since it's a Thursday night football game, Mike, let's take a throwback Thursday to last year when Lenny Williams went down in week nine with a torn ACL. He's back, and he has all his weapons as well. What are we, what are we looking to see from him? Yes, Vinny, like you said, Lenny Williams went down week nine with a torn ACL in a 31-20 win against Mercyhurst. The team rallied behind backup quarterback Mike Petropola to finish the season 10 and 2, blowing out Fairmont State 62 to 13 in the playoffs, but in the end losing to our rival Cal Vulcans 44 to 23 in the second round. But Lenny Williams, the star quarterback, is back with most of his weapons. We did get breaking news today that wide receiver Walt Pegues does have a separated shoulder and will be out three to four weeks. In an interview I had with Walt this morning, he's in high spirits and expects to be back much sooner than that. But we still have Alan Wright, JoJo Gauze, and my man, Mr. Samir Bullock. <laughs> the sophomore this year in his rookie campaign, he had over a thousand yards and nine touchdowns. He averaged over 6.1 yards per carry. But under Lenny Williams, the offense scored over 550 points. They had 3,595 rushing yards, 48 total rushing touchdowns, 12 of those coming from Lenny Williams. Add another 14 touchdown passes, 1,800 yards, and you have a juggernaut back in IUP. <laughs> Man, it looks like you have uh, all those weapons down. You might as well just all get their rookie cards or something, Mike. You know, I plan on it. I do plan on events. <laughs> Maybe get them signed, but we'll be right back here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I'm Vincent Lowry. He's Michael Griff now. We'll be right back. I only go down two days a week. Tuesday, Wednesday. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Michael. I just want to say I am so excited to be here for you guys as your 2017 IUP football sideline reporter. I was lucky enough to be here about two weeks ago at Media Day. I was able to talk to the guys, see how they were feeling about the season. And let me just tell you, we have some awesome guys on this team, as well as some enormous talent that I, for one, cannot wait to see take the field tonight throughout the rest of the season. Um, I'll be here from the very beginning, calling the coin toss all the way to the end of the game, the last couple minutes of the game. Um, I'm going to be able to interview Coach Tortorella, the new guy in the block that I'm sure everyone wants to hear about. As well as that, um, I'm going to interview... <laughs> <laughs> Loving the IUP spirit out here. I'm looking forward to interviewing the players, see how they're feeling. Good game, bad game. It's going to be a great season. I can't wait. Uh, I'll keep you updated. Hopefully there'll be minimal injuries. We'll see what happens with that, though. Uh, that's, keep, up the, keep up the good work, IUP. All right, thanks, Michael. Back to you.
up going to be. No, it was fine. I literally was just like. This is a one year. I really enjoy just going and coaching without having the stress of being head coach. So my two hours, two and a half hours there, I just lost. But. I don't think I could do it in the Heritage Conference, dude. I, I watched the tape from Friday. It's like oh, watching no, the junior I, you didn't get yelled at. I got yelled at. <laughs> We're not bad. We're, Homer City's horrible. We, like, dominated them, but we didn't have, I don't know what they were doing offensively. They kept giving the ball to the Dodgers, and they kept fumbling. Like, Melvin had two carries. My dad was giving me the break like, what are you doing? He's like, I kid you, I kid you, give him the ball. He didn't even give him the ball. Ran for 800 yards, but. I'm going to help that up. All right. I'll see you. Good evening. Yeah. We saw Lenny go down last year, week nine. And right now he's back on the field with all his weapons. So I'm excited to see what he has, what role he has to play for the offense. Well, yeah, as mentioned before, uh, Walt Pagis is out for at least three to four weeks with a separated shoulder. And the Crimson Hawks did lose feature running back Chris Temple in offseason workouts to a torn, I'm sorry, to a torn PCL. And that's really sad to see such a talented senior go down like that. Mike, do you know where the PCL is at? Uh, yes, it's on the back of the knee. Thank you very much, Vince. You have your ACL on your top. I was just MCL testing MCL on the middle. You. I was just hey, testing you. I Hey, mean, I know my things. I had this conversation earlier with, uh, with a professor of mine. Well, moving on from the professor, this broadcast is all student run and it, with brand new equipment, and it's just a, such an opportunity for all IUP comm students. Um, and here we have the kickoff right here, the Eagles versus the Crimson Hawks. And for the kickoff, we have Aiden Semenk, number 37. He's a senior, 6'205. You know, I'm excited to see uh, back to return for the Crimson Hawks. We have Mike Petropola. He's uh, been working in at the specialist position, and here we go. Refs blowing the whistle. And here we go. The 2017 IUP football Crimson Hawks season is underway. Petropola fields it nearly the end zone, rolling it up to the 10. He's making a move to the outside, moves it up to the middle, gets taken down at the 15. Not too good field position, but we got Lenny Williams back. I mean, Lenny, I'm sure he's not too uh, not too nervous about this. I mean, it's, come on. Absolutely. Good return by Mike Petropola. You know, he's he, he he's a he's a jack of all trades. Uh, he plays uh, strong safety. He plays backup quarterback. Now he's a punt returner. You know, he's a great kind of player. You can fit in in any situation that you need to. But we're going back to Lenny Williams out there, number five, and the man, Samir Bullock. I'm um, expecting a big game from this young man today. <laughs> Samir Bullock switching in with Chris Temple last season. And we have Lenny Williams giving it to Samir. Samir running up the middle, gaining about seven making it second and three and they're running no huddle no huddle Lenny back at shotgun giving it to Samir again running right up the middle and they break three <laughs> the 40 the 50 and he gets taken down and what did I just say Samir Bullock what a kid. You know, he can run, he can power run, he can speed run, and they're going back to the no huddle. No huddle, no huddle. Keeping up that tempo. We have Lenny Williams keeping up with the offense. First and ten. Lenny giving it to Allen Wright. Allen Wright with the switch out, and he is pushed out of bounds. Allen Alan Wright, I mean, he was a big key player last year. Broke, he had huge plays from breaking free just with slant routes and bubble routes. Officially a 29-yard run for the sophomore, Samir Bullock, number 26. We have second and eight for the Crimson Hawks. Giving it to Samir. Fakes it to Samir. And that's Rex Pierce on the reception. Almost broke free on that one. Got it on the ankles. And that makes it third down. 
Their first third down conversion for the season. What would you do if you were if you were Tor Tortorella right now? If I were Tortorella, I would Straight run that man. young man. man. Here we go. Lenny Williams. Play action. Give it to Allen Wright to the outside. Allen Wright going up the sideline. Getting a few more yards, but is forced out of bounds. That's a first down for the Crimson Hawks. And I like the way they're running the snow huddle right now. They're keeping the ball quick. They're doing some quick out passes. They're grounding Samir Bullock right up the gun. And that's how you pick Crimson Hawks football right there. Get the ball going on the ground. Get those quick outs. Just let your guy beat the cornerback and make a move. First and ten. Lenny giving it to Samir. Samir going up the middle. I don't know if that might have been a seal check right there. I mean, Lenny checking to see if the line really seal off that linebacker. Lenny giving it to Allen Wright again. The same bubble right that he had. He's dodging and dipping. He's going to the outside, going up the middle. No one's around him. And he gets taken down. Right around the seven yard line. What a little bubble play. You saw, you saw Allen Wright. He caught the ball. He ditched. He dodged. He jumped. He ran around. He made everyone miss. Taken down the seven-yard line. Great little play. I like to see that from the uh, IUP Crimson Hawks. And first and goal for the IUP offense. First time today. Lenny Williams yeah, yeah, yeah. giving it to Samir. Samir up the middle. He's stuffed, but still gains three, four yards on the play with 12.30 to go in the first quarter. Samir's actually coming out of the game now. Coming in is number 20, <laughs> Duan Brown. Lenny still running a no huddle. With trips. Trying to keep that tempo going. Second and goal for the Crimson Hawks. Lenny dropping back. Looking for JoJo Gauze. Couldn't connect. Yeah, that was just outside of the reach of JoJo Goss. He had a man draped on his back. And that's a big play. You know, you need JoJo to make with the absence of Walt Pegues. You know, Walt Pegues was a big, big time player for this offense. I mean, he was a weapon that Lenny pretty much looked for every single pass play. And I can't imagine what Lenny's feeling like without him. Now we have twins both sides for Lenny. Lenny in the shotgun, dropping back. Lenny zings it, no one's there. Flag on the play. Yeah, that will be pass interference on the defense. He just kind of grabbed his arm and yanked him back. Wasn't allowing him to make the catch. And that should be a Crimson Hawks first down. And coming in now is Noah Bertram. Kind of a hybrid tight end. Still running no huddle. This might be a new thing for the IUP Crimson Hogs. Hold it. My apologies. Automatic first down for the Hawks. Lenny underneath. Give it to Dewan Brown. And he's stuffed by the Ashen D line. Really couldn't get anywhere, Mike. I don't know. This Ashland D line looked pretty solid. But for however, for Samir Bullock, it's a different question. Chris Temple. Could be a huge key play right here. Dwan Brown. And he could be in. People are saying touchdown. Ref saying down. No TD yet. 11.07 left to go in the first quarter. Lenny Williams under center. Third and goal. Motion. Give it to Dewan Brown again. And Brown is in for the first touchdown of the season. And that is, a, that is the first touchdown of this freshman's career. Or are they calling him down? Oh, wow.
I don't know. Oh, I don't know about that one right there. You had the referee in the end zone calling it a touchdown, but the line judge stepped up and said no to that one. I've got to say centimeters. That, that looks like three feet. Chris Temple giving it to Dwan again. Flag on the play. False start. Might have been a false start on the Crimson Hawks offense because they are sending in the kicking unit. Dylan Sarka to kick the extra, to kick the field goal from the five yard line. If I was head coach, I'd be frustrated right you now. It just comes down to fundamentals and just discipline. Yeah, you make it down to the one yard line right that you one yard line like that. You have such a quick, easy drive down the field, and the kick is good by the Crimson Hawks. Dylan Sarka, the first points of the season by the IUP Crimson Hawks. IUP up 3-0 on the Ashland Eagles. We right back here on the Communications Media and Instructional Technology PhD program gave my life direction. This program was perfect for me with a combination of research and media production. Hands-on courses gave me skills that I now pass on to my students. I use all three areas of the program, production, theory, and research, every day in my job as a college professor. Learn how the CMIT PhD program can change your life. Visit iup.edu slash CMIT. The environment is my passion. Every day, I live for the outdoors and all of its challenges. That's why I enlisted in the Coast Guard. Now, I serve to protect the environment and defend my country. It's like I was born for this. Were you born ready for a greater challenge? Find out at GoCoastGuard.com. Success. We are back with Crimson Hawks versus the Eagles. Crimson Hawks put up three points for the first points of the season. Back to receive for the Eagles is Cameron Green and David Murray. The drive start off extremely promising. Samir Bullock, four rushes for 47 yards, 11.8 average per carry. He had a 29-yard run, but the drive stalled out at the end zone. Drive stalled out due to a false start. I mean... It's something you're learning boot camp pretty much. I mean, just straight discipline. And the kick is away, fielded by Murray. Murray taking it at the five. Murray going up at the sideline, 20, 25, 30, 35. He's pushed out of bounds. Great field position for the Eagles. And coming on the field is the Eagles offense. Coming on for the field for the Eagles offense is quarterback Travis Tarnowski. Where's he from again? He is from Broadview Heights, Ohio. Hmm. Well, Travis, I mean, let's see how you do against the Crimson Hawks defense. 10 07 left to go in the first quarter. Travis, that shotgun. Giving it to 24, going up the middle. But he stopped at the line. Yard and a half gain on that one. Shut down right at the line. Number 24, Andrew Vaughn couldn't get much. He was shut down at the line by the IUP Crimson Hawks defense. I believe that was Justin Weldon on the tackle or could have been uh, Jamal Everett. Yeah, yeah. If Travis back in the shotgun with sidecar. Motion, he's motion under center. High backfield. Travis, play action, looking for someone, looking for anything, giving it to 27, and he gets a first down on the defense. That was a nice play, a little rollout by number 16, Travis Tarnowski. He was looking for his big boy, number 47, down the field, but he found his running back, number 27, Mac Molesky, for the quick little hitter right there for the first down. Yeah, didn't like what he saw downfield, so he tossed it out to Mac. And Travis in shotgun with trips and a slot on the weak side. First and ten. Travis passing. 
And he's taken down at the 45-yard line, now in Crimson Hawk territory. Taken down by Jay Watkins. I'm interested to see how the IUP defense does with all the big-name starters from last year missing. Second and three. Travis motioning. Travis play action. Dumping it out to 13. The man he motioned. And that's a first down. That's Logan Bolin. Logan Bolin looking to go bowling against the defense. First and ten for the Eagles. It's coming in on defense is number 68, Justin Weldon. First and ten. Travis under center. Two in the backfield. Giving it off. 24. Andrew Vaughn ran with the ball there. A little bit of a pickup, about three or four yards. Second and five. Now coming in is DeAndre Easterling and Dondrea Tillman. DeAndre, he was a big, big role player on that defense. Just a vicious defensive end. He was always in there in the backfield, getting those running backs. He was just reading the play perfectly last season. Let's see how he does this year. Second and five. Travis, play action. Oh! Snagged straight in the armpit. That was number 88, Michael Schwetzer. First and 10 for Travis. <coughs> you know, Travis said, Lenny, you know, you can drive down the field, but guess what? I'm going to drive right back. So let's see if they have better discipline than the Crimson Hawks. I don't know. Travis Tornowski. And that's another run by number 24, Andrew Vaughn. Number 90, Dylan Scott on the tackle there. He was taken for a little bit of a ride, but eventually got the running back down. Coming back in is the big fullback, Mac Mikulski. Going into I formation under the center. Second and six. Two tight ends. Travis giving it to Vaughn. Vaughn is stuffed at the line, making it third down. Number 90, Dylan Scott back in there with the tackle. Jamal Everett coming into the game. Third down and five from the Crimson Hawks 20. You know, controversial topic that we like to talk about is how good will this defense do under pressure? I mean, right now, this is a pressure situation. Oh, and we got a timeout. Timeout by the Crimson Hawks. Paul Tortorella not liking what he saw out there. Wanted to uh, give his defense an earful, I believe. All right, we'll be right back with the Eagles versus the Crimson Hawks right here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. We see it every day. Hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes, internationally known faculty who are committed to your success. Real world experiences to guide you on your career and life path, an alumni network 120,000 strong. I'm IUP President Mike Driscoll. Visit us. Find your success at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And we're back. Eagles versus the Hawks. Hashtag Talons up, folks. And before break, Tortorella called a timeout, Mike. He said he was kind of frustrated. I mean, they drove right down the field, third and five. I don't think Tortorella wants any more yards Yeah, they the drove, Eagles. They drove right down the field. Tarnowski was four for four for 30, 33 yards. Uh, the running back, Vaughn, four rushes for 11 yards, getting these third down conversions. And I do not believe Tortorella was happy, and neither would I. And uh, hopefully they got their heads on straight. And now it's third and five. Travis and shotgun. Motion number five, Matthew Wilcox. Looking for the pass, play action. He's Travis taking himself up the middle. 
Wide open. No one's there. Finds a block and lands it. Hold right there on the play. I don't think the ref saw that one. Oh, man. Lands it inside the five-yard line. I think that was number 66. Was right on our number 92's face mask. Just grabbing them. But, hey, you can't get them all. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of game left, Mike. I mean, first and goal. Tortorella has to be frustrated. He probably just talked to him. Hey, he's probably going to take it if he doesn't see what he likes. He's going to take it right up the middle. Officially a 15-yard run down to the Crimson Hawks 5. First and goal. Close trips. Travis gives it to Vaughn. Vaughn finds nowhere. I'd say about a one-yard gain on the play. Maybe, maybe nothing. Second and goal. Travis Sr., 5'11", 218. And he's trying to make a play. Travis going under center. Two tight ends. Eye formation. Fakes the toss. Travis, and he's trapped in the backfield. He gets out of it. He finds... He finds 88. People are saying touchdown. Refs are saying touchdown. That was 88, Michael Schwetzer. Nice little play. We had pressure off the end coming, and we got him. We got Vaughn, but he recovered and found his tight end, Michael Schwetzer, right in the end zone. I think the ball bounced a little bit out of his arms, but good play if he kept that. Good, good vision by by Travis. I mean, I think the defense knows now that he's a scrambler. I mean, he's they gotta contain. They, they, they can't they can't overcommit. They just gotta wait, sit in their post and watch watch where he's going. Aiden Semenk for the extra point. Eagles number 18 in the country, Mike. Is that right? IUP ranked number nine. Ashton, I think, is actually ranked unranked, actually. 18, I'm sorry. Aiden Semenk for the extra point. Could make it 7-3 on top of the Hawks. It's blocked. It's blocked. Woo! You know, the defense couldn't stop him, but the field goal team said, nah, we got this. And he knocked off at least one point, possibly a nip right off the fingertips. And I that believe makes that was it. number 68. Justin Weldon may have gotten his arm up there, batting the ball away from Semantic's kick. Good play by the Crimson Hawks defense, getting there, not letting them get the full seven points. 6 3. Ashen coming out on top after that drive. 4.32 left to go in the first quarter. What have you seen so far? Have you been impressed by the Hawks? What have you seen? You know, I've been really impressed by the quarterback, Travis Tarnowski. Five for five on that drive, 37 yards and the touchdown, plus 15 rushing yards on the game. But I'm excited to see what's going to happen when Lenny Williams and his offense come back onto this field. Will they run the ball with Samir Bullock? Of course they will. <laughs> Find out next on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network, Mike. Back to receive is Don McNeil and Mike Petropola. I think it's amazing to see Mike Petropola back receiving, being also a specialist, as well as a quarterback last year. He's a very versatile athlete. I mean, the kid's like a Swiss Army knife. Put him anywhere <laughs> and he'll do it. <laughs> and you know, and you, lo you love to see that from a player who's willing to do so many things on your team. And number 83, Don McNeil receiving it at the end zone. Come to the far side, trying to evade and couldn't get anywhere. Gonna take the ball at the eight yard line. Yeah, not the best return we've seen today. He just danced in the back room too much. You know, that reminds me, remember back the old Steelers returner, Antoine Randall-L? He loved to play in the backfield. He didn't love to just run straight. And I understand you're trying to make a play. You're trying to get the ball going down the field. But sometimes, you know, 
you can't lose yardage like that whenever you're down in a game like this. First and ten. Yeah, yeah, it's true. They're down, Mike, but they still got so much time left. So, I mean, maybe they're just testing the waters. Maybe Dom McNeil's just testing the waters, seeing what he likes, what works, what doesn't. But here we have first and ten. Lenny at the shotgun. Giving it to Samir. Samir back in the game, moving up the middle. He keeps turning those legs, and he gets four yards on the play. There's your man, Mike, Samir Bullock. Samir Bullock, he is the guy. Four rushes, 47 yards. Let's see what this kid can do. Take the training wheels off, coach. He's ready to play. <laughs> Lenny Williams tosses, fakes the toss to Samir. He has nowhere to go, but he's wrapped up in the backfield. Yeah, that was just a total breakdown by the offensive line. I believe that was a design pitch. I mean, it was an option play, but uh, yeah, Lenny definitely should have got rid of that ball. You know, coming off the injury last year, it's not worth him taking those kind of hits, and the Crimson Hawks can't afford to take him those kinds of hits. And now we got third and ten. Tortorella can be happy on this one. First and ten, Lenny at shotgun, Samir sidecar, trips. And a slot on the far side. Lenny looking back to pass. Can't find anything. Looks for someone. Doesn't like what he sees. Just tosses it up, throws it away. And that makes it fourth and ten. Bringing out the punt team. Another poor play by the IUP offensive line. You know, we had such a great right guard last year, Ethan Cooper, who signed with the Steelers in the preseason. You know, a game like this, you really need to find out who your true offensive linemen are because you need to get some protection for Lenny Williams. You know, he on a, on a play just like that, where he scrambled a little bit, he tried to throw, and then he still got drilled in the end zone. You need to get him some help. You need to find some protection for your star exactly. quarterback. A lot you know, of miscommunication on that play. This team will go as far as Lenny Williams will take you. And here we have the punt. Almost blocked in the end zone. Received by number nine, Dale Irby. And he's swallowed up by the Hawks. He, as soon as he got it, just swallowed up by the talents. Ooh, a little got, extracurriculars on the play right there. A little scuffle down there. Three minutes left to go in the first quarter. It was David Irby on the return. And here we have Travis Tornanowski looking to make another round on the defense. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the best quarterbacks in all of Division II last year with 34 total touchdown passes. Wow. It's pretty stupendous, I gotta say that. I mean, out of you know 10 or 11 games, that, that, that's three touchdowns every single game he's having. First and 10. Tornowski looking for someone, doesn't like what he sees. Moving to the outside, scrambling, going up the sideline. He moves inside, and he is pushed out of bounds. A very good 13-yard game by Travis Tornowski. He dropped back, he was in the shotgun. He, he, he was scanning the field. He didn't see anything he liked downfield. He felt the pressure coming in, and he just took off. Yeah, he re yeah, really, really did not like what he sees, or maybe his offensive weapons aren't really communicating well with him, but he's been running the ball a lot. First and ten. Tornowski, play action, flag on the play, throwing it deep, wide open. Number five, Matthew Wilcox. That is a touchdown on the field, but it will not stand. That was a hold. In the backfield. There's a flag, there's a flag. Waiting for the refs to decide. That was a pretty good play by Wilcox. You gotta say, he got pretty good distance between the defensive back. And he ended up in the end zone. Andrew Vaughn on the hold right there. And that touchdown will be coming back. <laughs> it's going to be a breath of fresh air <laughs> for Tortorella. 6 3. Ashton still on top of IUP. Yeah, definitely not how you want to see the Crimson Hawks start this game off and start this season. Got some movement for Ashton. 
Vaughn at sidecar for Travis. Travis back to pass, looking for someone. Dumps it out to number 88. Michael Schwetzer got the touchdown on that last drive. Yeah, find Schwetzer for the third catch of the game, their third connection. Yeah, Schwetzer, <laughs> Schwetzer kind of seems like a uh, Jason Witten or a Heath Miller for Travis. I don't know, he seems pretty reliable. Must have duct tape on those hands or something. A little bit of stick em. A little stick em. Like they used to back in the old days in the NFL. <laughs> Second and six. Second and six, Mike. Travis under center, tosses it out to Vaughn. Vaughn to the outside. He's cutting it up, and he gets the first down for the Eagles. Clock's running 144 on the first quarter. Second and inches is what it seems like. Never mind, first down. First down, there we have Travis. And they, they look like they run a no huddle as well. Keeping that tempo rolling. First and 10. That's what you gotta do when you have a defense beat, you keep pounding at them, you keep exploiting their Travis with the trips on the far side. Travis back to pass. Signaling to go, but couldn't find anyone, throws it away. DeAndre Easterling on the pressure. Like I was saying, you exploit their weakness on that side of the field, and you just keep going at that player. And right now, it's the protection for Travis Tarnowski. He's you know, able to drop back. He has all the time in the world. He can find his receivers, his tight ends, his fullbacks for dink and dunk plays to get the first downs. And they can't stop him, and then he'll take off running. And that tempo, I mean no huddle and he'll scramble and just disorients the whole defense so i mean travis he could be a big threat for that defense second and ten travis under center giving it to vaughn fakes to vaughn travis back in play action give it to wide open cameron green my goodness wide open wow that was a very nice touchdown very nice throw by Travis Tarnowski. He rolled out to the right after the fake, finding his little receiver, number one, Cameron Green, right around the 10 yard line, right side. And he just took it right at the end zone. These Crimson Hawks are stunned right now. They, they, they don't know what's going on. They need, to, they need to kick it into gear and get a couple points on the board, score a touchdown, get the game a little closer, get their heads back into the game. Because it looks like they're not trying out here. Samank for the extra point. And now he gets the extra point. And I think Tortorella has a sense of vision for his team. The team is just not really communicating. I don't know. It's really not meshing together. Oh, I bet he has some senses going right now. And we have Ashton on top, 13-3 on top of IUP. And we will be right back with the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. The NCAA is a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Welcome back to Eagles versus the Hawks. Two birds competing against each other. And Aiden Samank for the kickoff. He just scored an extra point off of a touchdown by Cameron Green from Travis Tornowski. What did you see last drive, Mike? You know, that was Tornowski's second touchdown of the game. You saw the play. He rolled out to the right after the fake handoff, finding number one, Cameron Green, right around the 10-yard line for the touchdown. And here we have McNeil taking it in the end zone. Doesn't kneel it, takes it himself up the sideline. Oh, and he is clotheslined. That's a flag. Big flag by number 30. 30 by Trevante Jackson. That looked like a close on to me, Mike. No, know. I don't know what McNeil was thinking. He caught the ball, started to go, stopped, stuttered, thought about going, and then he ran. I think he just had to commit on that is, one. Is, is that an age kind of thing? I mean, he saw that he was out of the end zone. 
15 yard penalty on the Eagles. Unsportsmanlike conduct. There Here you we go. Have the you have him right there. He almost went for it and he stopped, looked down, his foot was out of the end zone, so he just had to go for it. IUP out of the 31 yard line. First down. Lenny Samir in the backfield as well. Lenny fakes it to Samir, tosses it out to 40. Rex Pierce couldn't pull it in. Number 33, Tony Peters on the coverage. I'm sorry, on the tackle of Lenny Williams. He came off, he came off the line like a loaded gun. He went and he just took Lenny down right there. 33, Tony Peters. Wow, that boy's fast. Yeah, Rex Pierce seems like a pretty, pretty big guy. I thought he was going to bring it down with one hand right there. You have trips for Lenny. Lenny back to pass. Swings it out to Samir. Samir in the backfield, taken down in the backfield. He's swallowed up. Swallowed up by the Ashland Eagles defense. Rex Pierce coming out of the game now. McNeil now in. This offense is just falling apart right now. They can do it. I know they can, Mike. It has not looked good so far. Lenny Williams sending Allen right in motion. Lenny back to pass. Pump fakes. Play action. Looking for something he likes, just throws it away. I don't know what's going on. Is it Lenny's head, or are the receivers not getting enough? Are the receivers not getting off the ball fast enough? Are they not getting away from their uh, cornerbacks? Do they need to start going with the quicker pass plays, like they did to drive down the field? I don't. I don't know what's going on right now with this Crimson Hawks offense. This is very uncharacteristic from what we're used to seeing. Yeah, not too sure, but Tortorella can't be happy. Jeez. Ashland still on top, 13-3. Five seconds, three on the game clock. Punt received by number nine, Dale Irby. Going up the middle. Taking it up the middle to the 41-yard line. <coughs> Beautiful return on the play by David Murray right there. Say that was about 20 yard return. He was dicing all over the field. They got him right around the 45, maybe the 43 of the Crimson Hawks. And that's the end of the first quarter. We will be right back on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. Receiving a Jefferson Award for public service was an honor I will always cherish. I've known since I was very young that I wanted to help make a difference, but I didn't create an organization to win an award. I did it because as a teacher, I believe all kids deserve a good start and a shot at high achievement. I'm April King, a graduate of Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Get my story at iup.edu. Students in communications media at Indiana University of Pennsylvania can focus on a variety of areas, including media promotions. Our promotion students learn their skills by working in a hands-on environment gaining real-world experience. They learn how to use media to promote, produce and manage events, and how media organizations operate. They create promotional campaigns and help clients pitch their services, products, and events. With excellent classes led by experienced teachers, the Communications Media Department at IUP is perfect for students interested in media promotion. Hawks versus the Eagles on Thursday Night Football. Travis giving it to Vaughn up the middle. I'm sorry, that was number 22, Luke Ogie. Vaughn may be getting a little bit of a rest, but Mike, we haven't even been talking about it, but it's Thursday Night Football underneath the lights. First time underneath the lights for two years. Yeah, I mean, through the first quarter, you know, one team showed up to play under the lights. I, I didn't quite see another team show up to play, but hey, there's still three quarters left. We're going to see what the Crimson Hawks can do this game. You know, Mike, I believe in the Crimson Hawks. They can, they will come back from this. And Travis rolling out, giving it to number three, Jamie Hentz. Wide open. Wide open on the sideline. Yeah, 
Jamie Hintz was wide open. Another good rollout by Tarnowski, finding his number three wide receiver, Jamie Hentz, for a solid 15-yard game down the field. And second and ten. First and ten for Ashland. Travis with twins and a sidecar. That's Ogie at the sidecar. Travis back to pass, looking for someone. Chucks it up to the corner, looking for Cameron Green. Good coverage on the play by, by Mikel Mackle right on Cameron Green, number one versus number one right there. A good old, good old fashioned number one battle. 1v1, one yeah, I think that's what they said, Mike. I think that's what they said. You know, I do believe I heard them say that. <laughs> Second quarter, 13.59 to go in the first half. Not looking too good for the Crimson Hawks, but it's still very early. Still very early. Second and 10. And here we have Ogie, sidecar motioning in 88. Sweatser, Travis back to pass, looking for number 12, Stanley Jackson. Stanley Jackson on the attempt right there, but Jay Watkins right in his face said, uh-uh, not today, Mr. <laughs> Stanley. Jay Watkins looking to be a leader again for this team who was last year, and now a lot of the past year starters have gone away, and he's pretty much the, one of the main leaders. Jay Watkins having seven total interceptions last year for first in the PSAC, gaining him All-American honors. Excited to see what he can do this year as the man in the secondary. Travis with trips on the top. Travis zinging it to number five, Matthew Wilcox. And that was a play you do not want to see Jay Watkins make. He played a little too off the receiver right there. Couldn't quite get on his angle or on his shoulder. Easy completion for Tarnowski right there. And they're at the IUP. Crimson Hawks, five-yard line now. First and goal, DeAndre Easterling coming off. The big guys coming in for the defense. Looking for some goal line defense, some good old fashioned Crimson Hawks. Crimson Hawks stop right here. Travis under center now, eye formation. Flag on the play, zero on the, on the time clock. Ashland did get the timeout there before the clock did stop, saving them the five-yard penalty, but now they're down one timeout for the rest of the half. Ashland up 13-3. Tortorella just talking to me. He's just saying, relax, guys. I mean, 13-12. I mean, what's, the, what's there to worry about? Like, 13-3, down by 10 points. You could easily get that. It's only a two-score game. That's what he needs to remind his guys. Keep their heads strong, keep their heads in the game. Yeah, one, one turnover could lead to a huge beatdown on the Eagles. Just get that momentum going and give that momentum to Lenny. I mean, there he is, Tortorella, right there. And, and he's not looking too happy, but there's Tortorella just talking to Mike, trying to get some plays out to his guys. <coughs> it's got to be an impressive move from being a defensive coordinator for the last 22 seasons and now becoming a head coach of a whole entire football team. It's impressive. Oh, it's great to see you you promote with you promote from within. And here we go, Ashland looking for a touchdown. First and goal for Travis. Motion, Travis, play action. Looking for the deep half of the end zone. Number five to Kai Turner there on the coverage against number 88, Michael Schwitzer, the man who already burned the Crimson Hawks for a touchdown earlier in this game. Second and goal. Second and goal. Eagles really trying to get a play that could put him in the, the end zone. I mean, they've been blocked the first time. And they got the second time, but maybe this third time, maybe won't happen, Mike. I don't know. Travis under center. Give it to Ogie. Ogie trying to find a hole in the middle. 
That makes it third and goal. Luke Ogie dragged down there at the about the five yard line there. So third and five. Let's see. Uh, let's see a turnover. That's what I want to see from the Crimson Hawks defense right there. You know, take uh, take take one back to the house. Maybe uh, Turnell's he makes a little uh, little mistake there. But you know, there is a reason this man is 27 and five all time in his career. He does not. Why is that, Mike? Enjoy losing games. Doesn't enjoy losing games. Who so doesn't? <laughs> Kind of like Tom Brady, is that what you're trying to say? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Third and goal, Mike. Third and goal. Fairly win games. <laughs> Ogie at the sidecar. Pass from Travis. It's way too much zing on that one. Looking for Travis Wilcox. Just a bit outside from Tarnowski. Sorry, Matthew Wilcox on that one. And that'll bring up fourth and goal. And that'll bring out the field goal team for the Eagles. That was a pretty good hold, Mike. That's what the defense can do. They held him to a field goal. I mean, and if they block it, what more could you ask for? And that right there is a Paul Tortorella defense. Stiffening out the bend, don't break. Almost blocked on that. But that's three points up for Ashland, making it 16-3. 12-16 left to go in the first half. Crimson Hawks looking to answer back after the score. How was that drive, Mike? I don't know. That was Tarnowski being Tarnowski. On the game, he has four, uh, nine completions, 14 attempts, 93 yards. But, you know, it's a very good mix of run and pass to get down the field. A little run by Vaughn, a little run by Tarnowski. Ogie is in there. And now we have Tortorella on the sideline. As you can see, he's talking to his guys. He's just saying, relax, guys. Like, just man your position. But I'm saying he's saying a lot more forceful man, a, a, a much forceful demeanor. Exactly. Maybe some words we can't say on air, but. <laughs> but still, seems pretty legitimate. legitimate. Pechpola and McNeil back to receive. And Aiden for the kickoff. Yo, these Crimson Hawks, they're not ready to quit yet. Not yet. A lot of time left in the first half. Lenny will be taking over on offense. And Petropolo will be fielding the ball from the six-yard line. Taking it himself. Taken down at the 22-yard line. <coughs> you know, Vince, what's the famous song? You know, you get knocked down, but you get up again. And that's what these Crimson Hawks need to do. They're down 13 points with a 12.09 left in the second quarter. There's plenty of time left here, guys. You need to get Lenny Williams to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Quick completions, quick passes. Look for Allen Wright in the slot. Look for maybe a little bit of JoJo Gauze out deep. And give the ball to my man, Samir Bullock. That's all I can ask for. And Samir on the field now, getting the ball up the middle, keeps turning those legs. And look at that, that was a solid four-yard play by Samir Bullock. You know, you know, Vinny, I wish there was a D2 fantasy football because that young man would be my first-round pick. <laughs> well, Mike, that would be illegal. So let's not do that. But second down for the Crimson Hawks. <laughs> and Lenny back at shotgun, Samir at the sidecar, giving it to Samir, fakes it to Samir, tipped off by the D-line by Ashland. Could have been a ball out, fumble or interception. That was a scary play for Lenny. Number 54, Brandon May, almost getting the interception there off the defended pass, deflected pass, I'm sorry. That was intended for number eight, JoJo Gauze. You know, I don't think, uh, I don't think Lenny even saw him. I mean, I mean, it's hard to see whenever a guy's blocked, like, clearly blocked, but then he just jumps out of nowhere. Lenny Williams with trips. Third down, looking to convert. Lenny Williams zinging it out to Samir. Samir, turn it on the Jets. And that is a Crimson Hawks first down. You see what happens? Do you see what happens, Vince, when you get my man the ball? First downs happen. They're huge, believe me. You can ask anyone. That should be on a shirt. First downs happen. First downs happen when you get it to Samir Bullock. 
Giving it to Samir again, right up the middle. Clearly a five plus yard run. Second down. Lenny keeping the tempo up, no huddle. Samir up the middle again. I don't know, Mike, he's looking tired on that one. I mean, he just... Hey, but my, man, but my man got the first down. He did get the first down, Mike. And he's Mike. coming out right now to take a little break. Number nine, Malik Anderson coming in the game. Malik Anderson, one of the freshman leaders last year on the offense. One of the freshman leader running backs. I think he's getting some time this year, switching out with Samir. Yeah, Malik Anderson did have a good first season. 40 rushes for 151 yards and two touchdowns on his season. Bubble out to Allen Wright. Allen Wright looking to turn up the sideline. And he's pushed out of bounds. That could have been a great break for Allen. I don't think he had too much... I don't think he had a good sense of vision on where he was running, but if he saw where he was going, whew, off the races for him. Allen now stacked behind JoJo Gods. Watch for the same kind of play on this one. Second down, gives it to Malik Anderson. Malik gets the first down. Taken out right over the 40-yard line to the 39 by Malik Anderson there. Good, solid, pounding run. First and ten, Lenny underneath the lights. Maybe this, this, maybe this could be his good luck charm under the lights. Maybe it could be, maybe it couldn't. We'll see what happens. Lenny Williams looking to pass, giving it to Allen Wright. Bubble route, looking to turn it up. Solid four or five yard games on a quick little hitter to the man, Allen Wright. <coughs> Second down for the Hawks. And there we have Allen Wright. He's a he's a great athlete, right? Coming right out of the bubble, coming hitting a bubble route, Alan maybe a switch route. Allen Wright, 5'9", 170 pounds, a native of McKeesport, Pennsylvania. And you know, he's an accounting major. Accounting major. Pretty good job outlook for him. Malik Anderson going up the outside. Another solid five yard run by Malik Anderson. Third down for Williams. Samir coming back in the game. Malik coming out. Samir got that water you needed. And it's third down looking to convert. Got a little taste of that power rain, huh, Samir? And third down for the offense. Lenny with twins on both sides. McNeil now in the game. Third down. Motioning Allen Wright, looking for an option play to Allen. Allen fumbles it. And he's down. Fourth down. Bad little connection there with Lenny Williams to Allen Wright. It was supposed to be a little quick shovel pass, not quite getting into the hands of Allen Wright. I don't know if he dropped it or if it didn't hit his hands or it bounced a weird way. But fourth and seven. And you know, I. I saw it in his hands. I think he just looked the other way while he had it in his hands and dropped it. You got to watch it all the way in. I don't know. 8.45 left. I don't think you go for it this early. This is a little little too early to be going for it on fourth down. But. All righty, everyone. Here we go. Fourth down conversion for Lenny Williams and the Crimson Hawks. Samir at the sidecar. Lenny in shotgun. Fourth down. Trying to make something happen with 8.45 left to go in the first half. Resetting the game clock to 8.52. And here we go. Lenny trying to keep this momentum going. Fourth down for the Hawks. Back to pass. Lenny looking for someone. Finds wide open, Don McNeil, Don McNeil, keep running, it's 10, the 5, touchdown, Crimson Hawks! Boom! Oh! Come on, Vince, I'm ready, say it, say it. Hashtag, Talon's up. There it is, that's my boy right there, Vince. What a play, Lenny Williams finding the young man, Don McNeil. Right on up the middle. On a nice little curl route right there, caught the ball, Ran the ball, touchdown, the ball. The redshirt sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania.
Dom McNeil. Dylan Sarka now for the extra point. And here we go. And it's good. This could be a road. And here we have the touchdown right here. Lenny Williams looking out to his right, finding Don McNeil on the curl, and he just beat number 33. I believe that was Tony Peters for the touchdown. Don McNeil, great play, great vision of where he needed to go. He completely juked out four guys. He had four guys chasing him right on his back. Still got the touchdown. Congrats to Don McNeil. And that makes it Ashland 16, still on top to 10 for IUP. First game of the season, underneath the lights, some Thursday night football for you. And you know, Vinny, what happened on that play that I said needed to happen? You need to get the red shirt uh, sophomore Samir Bullock in the game, <laughs> let him run the ball a little bit, get those short dink and dunk passes, Lenny Williams to Allen Wright, get those going down, and then, and only then, can you extend the ball down the field for a longer <laughs> touchdown, just like that. So far in the game, Allen Wright, six receptions, 36 yards. Lenny Williams, 10 for 15. 83 yards, one touchdown. Samir Bullock, eight attempts, 69 yards, averaging 8.6 yards per carry. Wow. Samir Bullock really starting that drive off, really gave some confidence, I think, to the other offensive weapons Lenny needed and started a spark. And Sean Bowling for the kickoff. Back to receive is nine, Dale Irby. He's been a threat to special teams all night long. <laughs> Irby trying to find somewhere to go. And the defense will take the field. Dropped at the 25-yard line right there. This is a good game. We've got a good game in our hands. It's not a blowout. It's pretty close, not going to lie. And the defense will take the field. First and 10. 8.37 left to go for the first half. Travis under center, I formation. Travis, play action, looking deep for Travis. And that was Max Redfield. Max Redfield, the transfer from Notre Dame and quarterback Jay Watkins on the coverage there. Transfer from Notre Dame, looking to get some playing time here with the Crimson Hawks, and I think he, I think he made a good choice. The Talon family out here. Welcome to have you, Max Redfield. Great coverage on that. Hey, if you can play like that more, hey, he's he he is a okay in my book. Second and ten for Travis. He has trips. Give it to Vaughn. Vaughn up the middle. He's stuffed. Stuffed by the Crimson Hawks nest. That's what you see, you know, you're not seeing what they, uh, what Ashland did in the first quarter. They're not doing the dink and dunk passes. They're trying to run the ball, but the Crimson Hawks offense or defensive line is just tightening and not letting them penetrate past the spot of the line of scrimmage, and they're getting dropped. Vaughn, six, uh, six attempts, 18 yards, and Ogie, two attempts for seven yards. Third and nine. Vaughn at sidecar. Travis trying to communicate with the lineman. Gives it to Vaughn. Vaughn to the outside. Vaughn, great juke, gets the first down. To Kai Turner on the stop there, number five. Good run by Vaughn, getting a first down for the Crim Crimson. Yeah, for, for, for the Crimson Hawks. I'm sorry, the Ashland Eagles. Ashland Eagles, not, yeah, they're not looking too good, Mike. I think their momentum kind of went down after that touchdown. Well, we can only hope so. I think that tempo really, really hit them hard. And I think uh, Crimson Hawks at first kind of bewildered at the Golden Eagles. I mean, they're coming out of nowhere. We, we have Travis now scrambling, trying to find someone. Throws it away. I was looking for Wilcox. Wilcox couldn't get much on that play, couldn't get couldn't get much separation from cornerback to Kai Turner. That will be second and ten for Travis Turnowski and his offense. Justin Weldon coming out now. Change of personnel for Ashland. 
Bringing on the speed guys, bringing on Cameron Green and Jamie Hentz on the left side of the field right here. Vic Trav's looking for a quick, quick dump pass. Second and ten. Timeout called by Ashland. And I think Tortorella, I think he likes, he likes what he's seeing now. I mean, he's causing a little bit of strife within that offense for Ashland. And the defense is working well together, and I think it took, just took some time to warm up on him the lice. Absolutely. You know, like you said, it's a little bit chilly out here this evening. You have to wake up, you know, get the muscles moving, you know. And, you know, you wake up, you know, you go to class all day, and then you wait around for a game like this. You know, you're not really, your head's not in as much because you've had to wait all day for this kind of game. So under lights is a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. And speaking of good things, let's talk about this preseason ranking for the Crimson Hawks, ranked number one in the PSAC. Yes, that was by a coach's poll. All the coaches in the PSAC did rank the Crimson Hawks the number one team. And not close, be close behind, actually, is Cal U at number two. Number two, Cal U was a big threat last year. I think, I mean, surprised me myself. I, I didn't expect such a great team to come out of Cal last year, but they came out fired. Yeah, they won the PSAC, made the playoffs, made a deep run into the playoffs. Beating, beating our Crimson Hawks in the second round. Yep. Crimson Hawks beating Fairmont State first round and then reaching Cal and took the yell on that one. And that's Ogie getting stuffed. That's a loss. 91, DeAndre Easterling on the tackle right there went straight for a beautiful leg tackle, bringing Ogie down. DeAndre, he just went straight for the throat on that one. He's like, Ogie, you're not getting anywhere on me. Taken down, loss of a yard on the play. Third and 11 for Tarnowski and his squad. Travis, back to pass, <laughs> looking for someone. Dumps it out to Vaughn. Vaughn trying to get past, and he stopped. Fourth down coming up. What a play by this Crimson Hawks defense. Stuffing number 24, Vaughn. I believe that was uh, quarterback J.R. Stevens on the tackle, getting him out of bounds. Vaughn is receiving an earful from the Hawks on the sideline and on the field. Fourth and 11, and Tarnowski is staying on the field. Fourth and I think nine, Mike. I think that fourth and eight, maybe. Maybe they're looking for the fake punt. That's why they have Mike Petropola back deep. Yep, Travis just it. fake. And fair catch, and Petropola will take it in. Lenny Williams coming on for maybe the last drive of the first half, looking to make something happen, looking to score before halftime. And we will be right back with the outcome of the first half right here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose Division II. And just then, Samir Bullock went for a run of five yards for the Hawks. If you're just joining us now, you're here with us for a Thursday night football game underneath the lights. The first game in two years here at George P. Miller Stadium. With a seal check by Lenny. Lenny takes himself to the outside. Go looking for a first down and he'll walk outside. And that's the Lenny Williams I want to see out there. 
making the plays. That's one thing he did last year before in injuring his ACL, tearing it in a week nine win against Mercyhurst. Those are the kind of plays he made. He got out of the pocket, danced around a little bit, and got the first downs, the key first downs. And first down, Lenny with his weapons in the game. Lenny giving it to Samir. Samir looking for the outside. Dashes it up the middle. No one's around him. The 40, the 30. No one can catch him. Samir Bullock. My goodness. What did I tell you about that man? Samir Bullock, my friend, you are a bad man, my friend. You are a bad man. I love to see what you can do to defenses. What a run. The crowd loves it. We and have a beautiful have... play right here. Samir taking it right up the gun, breaking a tackle, getting past another defender, but being chased down by, I believe that was number 36, Michael Griffith on the field. What a run, a 52-yard run. Giving it to Samir again up the middle. <coughs> a official 52-yard run on the play for the sophomore, Samir Bullock. Samir coming out for a breather. Malik Anderson now in the game. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see out of this offense. And that's what they can do to defenses. That's, I think that's a foreshadowing of what's to come for the season. Lenny looking for someone to pump fakes, scrambling, looking in the deep end zone for JoJo Gauze. Almost having JoJo, but he threw off his back foot, and that's one thing you don't want to see quarterbacks do is throwing off their back foot like that. They're very inaccurate, but you try to make a play, and that's what happens. Normally, plays like that are intercepted, and you don't want to see that, but luckily it was not. Yeah, Lenny took his head on a swivel and just kind of looked for all of his keys, looked for his targets, and he saw JoJo. JoJo was wide open, just a little bit too far. And now we have Lenny for a third down. <laughs> Timeout by IUP. Making it 4-11 left to go in this first half. Mike, what does Lenny have to do for this touchdown? Either throw it or run it. Throw it or run it? Run it himself? What are we talking about? You're, you're bad man Samir Bullock. I mean, <laughs> you might as well you know, make a promotional so video for him. Or hey, you know, I could do it. You know, they're, they're on the seven-yard line. This is where you want to see a quick little dink and dunk pass. Uh, they still can get the first down. I believe the first down is at the two-yard line, maybe? Or no, I'm sorry, that is the goal line. Yes, get a little dink and dunk pass. Or use the height of JoJo Goss. Toss it up in the air on a little fade route, maybe getting him that way. Or what you could do is... Hand the ball off to Samir Bullock. <laughs> Why not? It's worked all game. 11 rushes, 130 yards. Third down. Samir's actually not in the game. Dwan Brown now in, along with Rex Pierce. Rex kind of a hybrid tight end kind of fullback position. And Lenny Williams looking to convert, possibly score on the third down. Lenny Williams back to pass, looking for his keys, looking for his targets. Zinging it out to Jojo Gauze, Jojo Gauze in the end zone. But there is a flag on the field. Flag on the field. You know, if this play stands, winning, what did I tell you? Use the height of Jojo Gauze. Right here, you have Lenny Williams in the shotgun, has his man in motion, hiking the ball, dropping back, scanning the field, Finding his man, JoJo Gauz, right there. And that touchdown will stand for the IUP Crimson Hawks. And we're all tied up 16-16. And now we have Sarka for the extra point. Possibly making it 17-16. That's a huge momentum, momentum ruiner. Momentum for, shift. Momentum shift for the Crimson Hawks and, and the Eagles. Straight into the hands of the camera guy. Did you see that catch? <laughs> Ooh, I want to get the camera guy on the field. What get some catch by pads him. on him. Put him in the slot. But yes, the IEP Crimson Hawks have taken the lead 17 to 7 on a beautiful touchdown pass from Lenny Williams to JoJo Goss. 4.06 left to go in the first half. Crimson Hawks finally on top. First time on top all game except for the beginning when they scored their field goal and then which led to a 
Touchdown by the Eagles. Blocked extra point. Led to another touchdown by the Eagles. Got the extra point. And now we have IUP making a comeback with two touchdowns at the end of this first half. 4.06 left to go. Back to receive is the dangerous Dale Irby. I don't know. They got a key in on him. Special teams have been trouble with him. Eagles trying to make something happen in the last four minutes. Travis Tornaski, I mean, the way he's been playing all, all game, looks like he could make something happen. Maybe put a bad taste in the Crimson Hawks' mouth on the way to the locker room. But let's see what happens next. Sean Bowling on the kick. Dale Lorby back to receive at the three-yard line, taking himself on the outside, taking it straight down the field, the 40. Dukes out Sean Bowling, taking it past the 50 in the Crimson Hawk territory. <laughs> Dropped by number one, Eric, or tw I'm sorry, 21, Eric Doe on the play. Nice return by Irby. He found his lane and he just took off. These Crimson Hawks have not stand a chance that kick return. First and 10 for Travis. 3.57 left to go. Plenty of time to score. Plenty of time to make a touchdown. Plenty of time to make a field goal. But I think they're going to try and run out the clock so the Crimson Hawks cannot answer back. And now we have Vaughn at sidecar. Looking for play action. Travis handed out to Wilcox. Wilcox couldn't keep his eyes on it and drops it. And on that hit was number 22, J.R. Stevens. Great coverage. I mean, Wilcox just blatantly dropped the ball on that play, and that's not what you want to see down one going in to the second half to the Crimson Hawks. You need to make every play count. And that was, I mean, he, he, he definitely had a couple yards before J.R. Stevens got there to catch the ball and run a little bit. Second and 10, Travis back to pass. Looking for keys. He's going to the outside, taking himself. He's juking, he's diving, he slides. Possibly a first down. Good little scramble by Travis Tarnowski there, and I do believe that did go for the Ashland first down. Third and one for the Eagles. Wilcox down in the slot. Travis has all his fast guys in there, gives it to Vaughn. Vaughn gets the first down. Past the 35. We're in a no huddle here. First and 10. Travis really has his keys in the game with him. I don't think there's any personnel change lately. Travis <laughs> back to pass, throwing it to Sweester. Mr. Reliable Michael Schwitzer on the catch and play right there. Taking the ball right down to the Crimson Hawks, I'd say 21, 22 yard line. 11-yard completion. Travis has been moving down the field. Travis pass into Wilcox, short pass, and he's pushed out of bounds by Jay Watkins. It was probably the same exact play that he dropped and kept his eyes on the ball, bring it in. Second and four. Travis looking, and he throws it to Schwester. And he's in for the touchdown. Too easy. Another touchdown on the play for the tight end, Michael Schwitzer. Five receptions, I say 43 yards and two touchdowns so far in the game. That is the third touchdown pass for Travis Ternowski on the day. Yeah, my, Michael, he's... He's the go-to tight end right there. And Jason Witten, Heath Miller, I'm telling you, Mike. They got a key in on him. You know, some, some Will, some Mike linebackers, they'll just let the tight end go by, not reading the keys right. And I think that's just what happened right there. Straight down the field for Mike. And led to a touchdown. Extra point. Good for Ashland. Making it 23-17 on top of IUP. And we will be right back with 2.35 left to go on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life. See 
it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. We are back with 2.35 left to go in the first half. We just had a beautiful touchdown pass from Travis Tarnowski to his favorite target tonight, Michael Schwitzer. A decent, uh, I believe it was a 15-yard touchdown pass right up the gun. It was a simple tight end, it was a simple tight end, it was a tight end post route. Dump pass. Like it was just real easy. He's wide open. 2.35 left to go. It's plenty of time for Lenny to run down the field. Give it to Samir a few times, run down the clock even more. It could lead to a touchdown. And the ball fell off <laughs> the tee. That's every kicker's worst nightmare right there is when the wind's blowing a little rough and it falls right off the tee. Mm. And yeah, the wind's blowing towards the home <laughs> sideline. Maybe someone will have to come in and hold it. No, it did get a little windy. I'm not gonna lie, my papers are blowing around a little bit right now. But man, you know what, Vince? That breeze does feel good, though, having these hot summer days up here in Indiana. I do appreciate a nice breeze. Yeah, you can't appreciate it. Do appreciate it because when it goes away, it'll be away until probably April or May. So enjoy it while you can, Mike. Enjoy it while you can. 235 left to go. First half. Petropola, McNeil back to receive. Fielded by McNeil. Three yard line. Takes himself on the outside. They'll lead him out around the 20 yard line. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in this first half. And this is the last time we'll probably see the Crimson Hawks offense for the first half. Let's see what Lenny Williams has in store for this Ashland defense. They're trying to see a clutch play for the last minutes for the first half. I think Tortorella is trying to find something happen, trying to find some play that could just throw them into the end zone. Maybe like a pass play? No, throw them, Mike. Throw them. First and 10 for Lenny. And here we have Samir Bullock at sideline. Double twins, passes it to Allen Wright with a slant up the middle. He's quick, folks. He's moving it up towards the 50-yard line. <laughs> what did I say? The entire game, watch out for Allen Wright on that slant route. You know, it's, even though we did lose Walt Pegues for a couple weeks, Allen Wright is a very similar receiver. They're very, very short and fast. They can get down the field quick. Lenny gives it Samir up the middle. Samir, there's no one. Samir, half hurl, I think. Makes it a first down. Wow, he might have half hurdle over someone. You know, Vince, the real question I really have for a lot of teams is, how can you stop that man? How can you stop <laughs> that young man? As you saw last year, you couldn't. A lot of teams couldn't. <laughs> First and ten. Lenny with both twins. We have McNeil in as well as Kolb Hughes, number 84, getting some height in the game. First and 10. Lenny back to pass, looking for a target, chucks it deep, looking for Allen Wright over the shoulder. And if he put his arms together, that would have been right in wow. his hands. And how often does that happen? You had Allen Wright and Don McNeil, both wide open. Lenny Williams, he had his choice. Who am I going to throw to? He just chucked it up in the air. Unfortunately, Allen Wright couldn't quite pull the ball in. But man, how often does that happen? You have two wide open wide receivers running straight downfield. Second and 10. Wow, this is really good, really good play. And now we have Allen Wright on the line, trips. Like, it looked like to be a screen to Samira, but couldn't couldn't capitalize on it. Man, that'll be a loss. Ending up a third down. 116 left to go, and the clock is rolling. So that'd be third down and 12 from the Crimson Hawks 42 yard line. IUP has one timeout left. Same with Ashland. Maybe trying to get a few more yards. Throw in Dylan Sarka for the field goal. Third down. 
Lenny Williams, back to pass, zings it. Into the wow. bread basket of Cole Hughes. Right in the stomach. What a play and by Cole Hughes right there. A little mix up on the play. I really don't know quite what happened there. There were two receivers right in the same area. But Cole Hughes did turn around, found the ball right in his hands. Good catch. Fourth and one. Lenny giving it to Samir. Samir up the middle. He gets the first down. Move the chain. Crimson Hawks. First down right there. 24 seconds. No huddle. <coughs> Lenny trying to make something happen before they head in the locker room. Muffled snap. Fumble. Flag on the play. But I want to talk about Cole Pughes for a second. Redshirt sophomore from Williamsville, New York. A transfer from Edinburgh. Glad to have you here, sir. Glad to have you here. Tortorella on the field now. Not too happy. He has to be frustrated. Out of his mind. I would hate to see the offense getting frantic. Doing anything risky, but... Flag has to help the offense on that. First and five, 13 seconds to go. Lunny, back to pass. Whistle on the play again. I don't know, Mike, did you see that? Uh, I'm not sure what it was on. Was the ball placed wrong or? Maybe on the game clock? We will hear right now. Already, first and five for the Crimson Hawks. Lenny Williams, twins on both sides. Lenny, back to shoot. Looking for a target. Scrambling to the outside, taking it himself. He's throwing deep to the end zone. Almost intercepted by Ashland Eagles. Flag on the play. That looked like pass interference to me, Mike. Oh, yeah, I would uh, definitely say so. Pass interference on that one. And bringing out the field goal unit, Dylan Sarka to kick it through the uprights. Three seconds left to go in this first half. Ashland up 23-17. Looking to make it 23-20. Three seconds to go in the first half. So we're going to split the ball on this one. It was a 15-yard penalty right there, and then they move it up. Oh! That's right on the five-yard line. How much? Three seconds left. Nope. You have to kick the ball right there. Not a smart play if they go for it right here. You need to get the short points yep. to make it a three-point game going into the half. Got to kick it on this one. Crimson Hawks still in the game. Sarga for the field goal. And that's through the uprights. Making it 23-20, Ashland on top, and that will be the first half for the Crimson Hawks. We'll be right back here with the second half on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yeah. I did everything right. I went to college, graduated with honors but I'm just not getting to where I want to be. I need to get to the next level. What am I missing? Where are these people going? What, what do they have that I don't? How do I get that edge, that hands-on experience that will put me ahead of the competition? Graduate school at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Thank 
you. Kindness. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. All your professors, all of them, they know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. Walk away, Renee. Then the band will present this old heart of mine made famous by the Isley Brothers. Sit back and enjoy the musical and visual excellence that is The Legend!
We are back with half number two underneath the lights for some Thursday night football. We just heard from head coach Paul Tortorella some of the big things this team is trying to fix going into the second half. One thing he said is the quarterback scrambling. Travis Ternowski has three attempts and 35 yards on the ground when he gets out to run the ball. We need to stop that and he needs to be finished now. Coming up next, and you have covering the kickoffs there. That's one big thing that the Crimson Hawks have to stop as well, is they need to cover the kickoffs. And we are back here for the second half of the Crimson Hawks versus the Eagles. 3,235 people in attendance for the game tonight. 3,200. And here we have the kickoff by Sean Bowling. That's Irby with the recovery. He's been a threat to special teams all night long. He's going up the sideline, putting in good field position for the Eagles. Taken down just outside the 40, probably to the 38 or 39 right there for Irby, who has been the threat most of the game because, you know, you don't see a lot of passing yards for Tanowski, not a lot of rushing yards by the other team. But what they've been doing is they've been getting great field position off this Crimson Hawks coverage team. First and ten with Travis. <laughs> you know, we saw a big touchdown last drive by IUP. I think Travis is trying to answer with a big score. Dumps it off to Wilcox. Wilcox will get a late hit, possibly. Possibly a late hit by number one, Mikhail Mackle. Tortorella is not too happy with that. Five yards for the Ashland Eagles offense. Second and five. Travis with the trips. Travis back to pass, looking for targets. Travis, he's wrapped up by the Hawks. I believe that was by number 95, uh, Gunner Royer. That's what defense can do. I mean, they got the pressure on. They got the quarterback dance and then just right into the I'm towns. sorry that was number 68 Justin Weldon <laughs> and Travis handed off to Vaughn Vaughn up the middle nowhere to go two yard gain and that makes it fourth down wrapped up by number 85 defensive end Matt Moad good play by Matt Moad the grad student, the red shirt from Easton, PA, in exercise science, Matt Moad. Fourth down, they might go for it, but we did see Travis fake the punt. He, f he faked the play and he actually punted the ball. Fourth down. Travis, and there goes the punt, almost blocked. And here we have Petropola fielding the ball, 25, taken down. And we will get the ball a little bit past the 20. And you did see the defense get a hand on number 16, Tarnowski, the quarterback. And there are a lot of oohs in the audience. But no, that is a legal play because he is the quarterback on that play, not the exactly. punter. Yep. He's not the kicker. It was pretty clean. Legal to hit him. And Lenny coming on the field first time for this half. He's just trying to put on the points that he's been doing in the second quarter. He's just trying to repeat for the third and fourth. And that's one thing Lenny has to do. He started off the game 14 of 21, 123 yards, and two touchdowns. Not much on the ground, only three yards. Lenny gives it to Samir. Samir up the middle. There's no one where he's going. A good five-yard pickup by number 26, Samir Bullock. A good handoff by Lenny Williams. He found the hole, executed the hole perfectly for a good five yards for this Hawks offense. 
Second down for the Hawks. Trips to the far side. Lenny at shotgun. Samir. And a bubble route to Allen Wright. Allen Wright up the sideline. He's free. He's breaking away. He jukes him out. He goes. He goes. And he's taken down at the 31-yard line. Good play by Allen Wright there, right there. We tried to get, they tried to get that play all game. They kept running the bubble routes to him, the quick screens, and that right there is how this executed perfectly. Good play by Lenny Williams getting the ball to his speedster, Allen Wright, from McKeesport, Pennsylvania. I think Allen Wright's been their, uh, their, their main slot man. I mean, the bubble route, the slant route, quick, quick pump and draw, and there you go. And Samir Bolick just smashed right at the line. Smashed at the 30, one yard game on the play. But you know, like we said in pregame in the game earlier, we did lose uh, Walt Pagis for the game. And you know, a guy like uh, Allen Wright needs to step in there. The same kind of play style, a quick, speedy kind of player. You still have your hype man, Jojo Gauze, on the outside. Keep getting the ball to your quick players. Yeah, he's going. Lenny back to pass, looking for Rex Pierce. Rex Pierce! Oh, Rex Pierce! Getting a little athletic, making a half hurdle. A little back step, making the <laughs> defender miss. Good play by the big man, number 40, Rex Pierce. I think Rex put on his dancing shoes tonight. And said, I don't want to tango with you. I'll just go for a little bit more yardage. Lenny Williams gives it to Samir. Samir up the middle, gets a few blocks. Solid five yards by Samir Bullock on the play. And second down. You know, there's one thing I see. I see Jojo Gauze right on the outside. You know, I think he's ready. I think he's ready for another quick touchdown pass. You know, using that height to the advantage in the deep corner. Second down, Lenny get it to Samir again. Samir right up the middle. And he gets a first down, making it first and goal. Inside the 10, this could be dangerous for the Eagles. Lenny giving it again to Samir. Samir trying to get to the outside. Good containment by the Eagles. Second and goal. And Lenny has twins with Rex Pierce still in the game. Samir Bullock at sidecar. Back to pass into the deep corner. And that, there is a flag on the play. Number 11, Shawnique Brown on the potential touchdown. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with this flag. He may have gotten a little bit handsy in the end zone, and they might call this one back. Swanee Brown, he had good separation. DB was with him the whole time, took a step back, got that opening. And yes, that is pass interference on the offense, number 11. Shawnique Brown, ball's coming back. You have the ball right here, Lenny Williams looking for the man in the shotgun, has two men in the backfield, hiking the ball right around here, looking for his man, and you see, yes, you see Shawnique Brown with the push off, you cannot do that. Good vision by Lenny. Lenny making it second and goal, second and long goal. Ball on the 22-yard line. Lenny looking for an objective. He fires to McNeil. A little too low. McNeil couldn't gobble it up. And now we have third and goal. Looking for something crazy from Tortorella. And here we have Trips. Trips for Lenny and Samir in the backfield. Third and goal. Lenny looking for someone. Shoots at Samir. Samir up the sideline trying to get a few blocks but makes it up to the six. 
good catch by Samir Bullock, getting his kicker, Dylan Sarka, back in range, a little, a little closer to get the field goal attempt off. Fourth and goal, and the field goal unit will come on the field. We're leaving the offense, still getting some points on the board. Possibly wrapping it up to 23-23. 10.06 left to go in the third. I don't know, I would be satisfied with this drive, Mike. I mean, getting some points out of it, so not going empty-handed. Dylan Sarka through the uprights. And it's good for three points. 23-23, all tied up with 9.47 to go, third quarter. It's a tough game, Mike. You know, I did like that drive. That was a solid drive. You get the very long play to Allen Wright, who has eight catches and 98 yards on the game. A little splash and dash by Samir Bullock on the ground. Lenny Williams has found Allen Wright open many of times. Hopefully, we can find him some more. Yeah, they were down 16-3, came back. Scored two touchdowns in the second quarter, bringing it up to 20, 20, and then down by three at the halftime, and now they're all wrapped up, 23-23. The Crimson Hawks, I believe, Mike, I believe in the Crimson Hawks. As do I, Vince, you can never, you can never not believe in a team so talented with so much to offer. Now we have Sean Bowling coming out for the kickoff. I'll keep saying it, saying it again, Dale Irby, he is a threat. He can, he's just a monster on returns. And like they talked about, like the coach talked about right before the game, uh, the half started, they need to cover the kicks much better than they already have. A wall of Crimson Hawks getting ready to fight off these Eagles. And here we go, Sean Bowling with the kickoff. Straight to Irby. Irby fields it in his own end zone. Trying to find a few blocks. And he gets taken down at the 36. Brought down by number one, Mikel Mackle. Good coverage on the play. Now that is something Coach definitely would have been proud of. <laughs> Coach Tortorella, I mean, I would be I would be satisfied right now. The performance current. I mean, they were down and came back. So just keep driving, staying confident. And pretty soon they have a steamroll engine going all over the Eagles. First and ten for Travis. Travis Ternowski, first and ten, gives it to Vaughn. Vaughn running up the middle, gets a few yards and some change. Solid eight-yard run by Andrew Vaughn on the play, and that's one thing the coach talked about as well. They haven't, the Eagles have not been burning the Hawks with a ground game other than Travis Tarnowski, and that's one thing they need to fix going into this half if they want a chance to beat these Crimson Hawks is get your running backs in better holes, get them better positions to make plays for your team and help out your quarterback. Travis Tarnowski. Yeah, I think you just got to contain the outside. I mean, Travis gets out on the outside. You're pretty much done for. Dropping back, looking to throw deep. Oh, right through the hands of, of our Mike. Of our buddy Michael Schwitzer. And, ooh, and he is down on the play. Not what you want to see in the first game of the season. A promising player for this offense. And he is down. I think he might just be cramp cramping up, Mike. You hope that's all it is. I hope so. You always hope that's all it is. Hopefully he can get up to his feet. Mike Switzer, I mean, he's a, he's a big key role in that offense. Pretty much the reliable tight end. I mean, no where receivers are open, open, just dump it off straight to the tight end. That could be a huge blow to their offense. But now they're at third down, third and two, possibly looking to give it to Vaughn. Yeah, Michael Switzer, a big guy, 6'2", 250 pounds, playing tight end. Wish him all the best, hope he gets back on the field soon. <coughs> now with the D-line getting amped up to stop the Eagles, giving it to Vaughn. 
Vaughn gets the first down with little containment from the defense. First down for Vaughn. I think that was a pretty good fake by Travis, actually. He went off to the opposite side, and I saw a few linebackers go towards him. Yeah, we saw the play by Tarnowski. He's very good on the play fake. Travis. Good for motion. Dumping it out to number three, going up the sidelines. Jamie Hentz getting the first down there in the reception from quarterback Travis Tarnowski. Good run on the good catch and a run on the play. First and ten for the Eagles. I mean, they're running right down the field as well, just like we did. So they can, they said, you know, we can, you can do it, we can do it too. So let's just see what happens. Eight well, eleven to go. One of those typical anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> let's see who can do it the best today. Travis giving it to Vaughn again. Vaughn going up the middle. He gets stuffed halfway. Officially a 13-yard reception for Jamie Hentz, the previous play. And coming on the field are the big defensive lineman, number 68, Justin Weldon, along with Jamal Averitt. It's a personnel change. We got trips for Travis with Vaughn at the sidecar. Giving it to Vaughn. Play action by Travis. Travis is hit. We get a deadly hit. Crushed by number 99, Deondre Tillman, on the play, bringing down the Ashland quarterback. For Third a and minimal six. Game. Third and six for Eagles. And Travis is trying to get this tempo going. I mean, you go in the locker room, you get that momentum down, he's just trying to get it churning, get that energy going. Back to pass, looking for an objective, fires it out to number one, Cameron Green. The initial hit made by number 10, Max Redfield. Tackle made by Takai Turner, number five. Takai Turner, he's one of the big leaders for the defense as well. Absolutely. He and Jay Watkins helped the Crimson Hawks to a total of 24 interceptions last season. An unheard of number in the PSAC. I believe it was third. And we have the Crimson Hawks sideline. Just trying to focus on what to do with the Eagles. And there's a big, big swarm of Crimson Hawks. No gain on that. Brought down by number six. Oh, I'm sorry. First met by number 36, Nick Amendola in the back. <coughs> Second down for the Eagles. <coughs> Eagles 18th in the country. Had a pretty big turnout in the stands. Second down and 11. Back to pass, Travis, and he has nowhere to go. Dropped by number 91, DeAndre Easterling for the good sack on the play. A good loss of four or five on Tarnowski. Right into the talons of the Crimson Hawks. Right into Easterling's talons, huh? <laughs> They're in the 14, Mike. <laughs> Third and, third and long for Travis and his Eagles. Travis back to pass, looking to fire the trigger. Caught by Mike Schweitzer. He's back in the game. Michael Schweitzer back in the game. Good to see him back on the field. Like you said, Vince, maybe it just was a little hammy cramp. Good to see him back. He's been a big part of this offense. Fourth down for the Eagles. You know, Mike, I don't know what I don't know what I would do at this point. I mean, maybe kick a field goal, go for it. 502 left to go in the third. With a tight game like this, I don't know. Well, they're gonna go for it, so let's see what happens. Fourth and six. Travis dropping back. Firing. Cameron Green. Could be short. Could be short. It's short. 
Cameron Green on the reception. He needed six, and he got five. Good play by the Crimson Hawks defense, setting up their offense on the 25-yard line. And that's a turnover on downs. Coming on the field, Lenny Williams. Big turnover on downs, big momentum change. 4.46 left to go. Jojo Gaz stacked up with McNeil behind. Samir up the middle. Couldn't get anywhere. Couldn't get past that defensive line. Second and nine for Lenny Williams and his Crimson Hawks. Lenny back to pass. Fires the gun just a little bit too high for Colby. Third down. Allen right now in the game. Rex Pierce will come out. Yeah, that play is very un Lenny Williams like. That ball got away from him by a long shot, almost intercepted by the safety. Third down. Lenny, third and long for him. Allen right in motion. Allen looking for someone, looking for Lenny, and McNeil catches it, looking for a first down. That could be close. They are not going to give him the first down on that one. And that'll bring up fourth and close. Fourth and one. And they're going to bring on the punting units. Kobe, a little confusion going on right now. Fourth and one. They are sending on the punting team. I think that was a smart move. And with the punt, back to receive Irby once again. Irby whistles for a fair catch. And we're going to go down to Emma McCarthy on the sidelines with injured wide receiver Walt Pegues. How's it going down there, Emma? We have the opportunity to talk to our wide receiver, Walt, a little bit. Obviously, here you are on the sideline with me. Can you tell us a little bit what happened? Uh, I dislocated my shoulder uh, two weeks ago at practice and then again on Tuesday. So. I'm out for today and not really sure like what that means going forward. Um, so uh, we know um, it's obviously dislocated, but uh, I mean, optimistically at least, you know, nothing's torn, everything's good like that, you know. Where's your head at? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm definitely motivated to come back, but more excited like just for my teammates and the home opener. So it's good to be out here with them and yeah. hopefully pull out this victory. How do you feel about the season? Definitely optimistic about it and yeah. got a lot of good guys coming back, a lot of new guys, so excited for that. Senior year? Yep, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. No problem. And we're back with the Crimson Hawks. Thanks a lot, Walt, for the interview. We uh, just saw a one-yard run by Andrew Vaughn up the gun. He was stuffed by a horde of Crimson Hawks. Second down on the play. Second down for Travis on the field. Will Cox will come on the field. And he'll, Travis will have stacked trips for himself. Vaughn at the sidecar. And Travis back, looking, it takes it himself to the outside, play action, gives it to Wilcox. No signal yet. They're waving that incomplete. Bringing up third down. Third and seven from the Crimson Hawks, 29 yard line. It was just cool to see uh, Walt Pegues being optimistic, you know. It's just great to see 
such a key player for the team. Just being optimistic about this about this season, he's really trying to get back out there and just play with his teammates. Absolutely, I had a conversation with Walt today uh, during class, and we talked about his injury for a couple minutes. You know, wish him the best, and you know, I believe Walt Pegues is a fighter. He'll be back. Third and seven, Travis. Play action, scrambling, scrambling, looking for someone deep, firing Wilcox. Big, big block by Takai Turner. He said, no thank you, not on my island. No, Travis, I would not like any of that in my house. What a play, number five versus number five. That was Matthew Wilcox versus Takai Turner, and you saw Tarnowski rolling out to the right, and he pointed, go down the field, get my receivers down there, and they all started running to the same exact spot, and he just kind of lobbed it up right there, but thankfully, Takai Turner was there to deflect it. And fourth down, possibly going for it. With the punt, Petropola will field it, fumbled, catch, going to the outside, trying to find something. Gets no blocking. 2.20 left to go in the third quarter. 2.20 left to go in the third quarter. 23-23. Crimson Hawks will get the ball back. I think they got plenty of time to make something happen. Absolutely. It's still the third quarter. You still have one more to go. You have about 17 minutes left. I'm sorry, 14 minutes left in this ball game. We're going to see what happens here at George P. Miller Stadium in beautiful Indiana, Pennsylvania. And plus, I think it delights me. You can't beat that. Allen Wright in motion. Samir taking the ball, going up the middle, making it second down. <coughs> Some. I'm sorry, that was Malik Anderson, actually, on the run. Number 20, Dwayne Brown, checking into the game. Second down with trips. Another run, but is stuffed at the line. Couldn't take him down, but throws him like a rag doll. No huddle for Lenny. Dwayne Brown remaining in the backfield. Double twins for Lenny. Trying to convert for this third down. Clock is rolling. Trying to waste the time clock down. Lenny back to pass. Chucks it in the middle, almost taken by Allen Ryder, intercepted. It was intercepted by number 31, Isaiah Stiverson. Stiverson on the interception of Lenny Williams, and he just matched his total interceptions for last season with one. I mean, the guy's human. He is human. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't think so, but he is human. Travis Tarnowski taking the field again with Andrew Vaughn in the backfield. Crimson Hawks lined up in a 4-3 defense. You know, Allen, Allen Wright, he had the ball, but at the same time, he couldn't do anything about it. I mean, the defensive back mostly had control and led to an interception. I mean, I, I want to blame him. I want to blame Allen Wright, so. And I don't think Lenny saw the defender right next to him. Second down, defense back out on the field. Less than a minute to go. Eagles might just waste the clock out. Leading to the final quarter for this Thursday night football game. Vaughn taking the ball. Nowhere to go for the D-line. Making it third down and five. Dropped at the 45-yard line of the Crimson Hawks. Fifteen seconds to go. Getting a little chilly out here, Mike. I don't know. Oh, I like it. Feels good for once. <laughs> not, uh, it's not 90 degrees in Indiana anymore, and I love it. 
Back to pass. Gives it to Vaughn. Could it convert? He's not close enough for the first down. 94, Jordan Divin on the stop. He just tripped him up by the shoelaces. He grabbed his big toe and said, uh-uh, get back here. You're not getting the first down today. And fourth quarter, final quarter for this game. Opener for the IUP Crimson Hawks season. And we have a big game on our hands. 23-23 right here on the Crimson Hawks Sports Network. Make this world better if we don't start believing the love really, really, really is the answer. Everybody join hands, cause it's time now. back for fourth quarter with the Eagles and the Hawks. <coughs> Two species of bird like. When did we ever get this? I guess Clarion and IUP. Clarion, IUP, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. You know, Lenny Williams, he's been a great leader for this team so far. I mean, he, he's done great plays except for that last interception he just had, but He's really brought this team back and brought it back to life. And for example, I mean, he's, it's reflecting from last year. I mean, he's, he did great things last year and it's rolling into this year. He said he wasn't finished last year and here we are. I think this might be one place where they go with the fake punt here. I don't think they're actually gonna do it. Let's see, Tarnowski is the punter right now. With the punts. And they will let the ball roll into the end zone. Great. So far, your stats on the game. Lenny Williams, 18 for 28, 194, two touchdowns, one interception. Samir Bullock, 19 attempts for 171 yards, zero touchdowns on the game. And Allen Wright, eight receptions for 98 yards. And on the other side, Travis Tarnowski, 19 for 30, 171, and three touchdowns. Andrew Vaughn, 17 attempts, 62 yards. And Michael Schweitzer, six receptions, 53 yards, and two touchdowns on the game. First and 10, Lenny double twins. Allen Wright stacked up behind, he gives it to Samir. Malik Anderson on the carry there, in for Samir Bullock, and there's a man coming right back in. Malik Anderson coming out. McNeil and JoJo Gauz on the far side. You see right there, Allen Wright. Lenny Williams backing up, looking for a target. He's scrambling, he shoots. Almost intercepted again. Almost intercepted by Michael Griffin. Definitely not another smart pass by Lenny Williams, starting ending the last drive with an interception, starting this drive with another possible interception. Good thing that did go right through his hands. Lenny Williams needs to pull the reins back a little bit, get back. To, they need to get back to what the Crimson Hawks have done so far to win this game, that is running the ball. They have 187 rushing yards on the game. They need to get back to running the ball. We have trips for Lenny, third down, back to pass. Lenny slinging it in the middle to McNeil. McNeil grabs it right in the hands, leaving it to the 40-yard line, 14.09 left to go. Good catch by Don McNeil, getting the ball down to the 40-yard line. Good to see Lenny Williams completing a pass there. But now you have the first down, you have a fresh set of downs. You need to start running the ball. The defense of the Ashland Eagles is tired. You need to run the ball down their throat get down to the end zone, score a touchdown, extend your lead. First and 10, Lenny looking once again. Lenny chucking it, throws it away, couldn't find anyone. Man, Vince, they do not listen to me. <laughs> Run the ball. Run the ball. You know, my God, I don't know if they want to listen to you. I'm you know, not too sure. I don't get paid to do that, so you know, they can handle the play calls. I'm, I will throw my opinion in there, but Hey, good thoughts, get, good thoughts. Get the ball rolling. Lenny not too happy about that last play. 
and I, he was looking for JoJo, but way too way too far downfield. Couldn't get that separation with the defensive back. And he'll give it to Samir this time, just to get a little bit more yardage. A little power run there for Samir Bullock, a gain of two on the play out of the shotgun. Rex Pierce coming out. Don McNeil coming in. Don McNeil, he kind of reminds me of like a young Wes, Wes Welker. I don't know, he's small, <laughs> he's quick. Small, quick, and shifty. That's what the Crimson Hawks love in their offense. Young, quick, shifty receivers. And here we have Lenny dropping back. Lenny trying to find someone, scrambling around. An athletic play by Lenny, almost a one-handed grab. I believe that was JoJo. Yeah, by JoJo, using that length of arms. Just a bit outside, though. <laughs> He's had like three feet of length just on the arm span. <laughs> Good try, JoJo. But that will bring up fourth down. And for the punt will be number 35, Nikki Ruiz. Fourth down. Running on the field right now is Max Redfield. Along with John at McDonald Horner. And it's just going to be a timeout. IEP coach is not happy. Missing personnel on the field. Not too happy on that. Tortorella coming on out. Someone's about to get an earful on this one. Poor guy. I'm glad I'm not on that field right now. <laughs> I would not want to be a fly in that huddle, I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right, fourth down. All I gotta say is don't kick it to Irby, but I feel pretty sure he's gonna be receiving it, so. Just gotta cover him, just gotta cover him. Really Directional well. kick, kick the ball out of bounds so they can't get to it. Irby coming out to receive. Thirteen oh five left to go in the game. Ruiz with the punt. Botched kick. Oh, possibly getting the ball. And they will have it down within the five yard line. Down at the three. You know, I thought that was a botch punt, but no. That was a good little knuckleball <laughs> down by the punter. I'm sure the players could possibly say, see, we're good, don't worry. <laughs> Even if they forget the personnel. Still turned out to be terrible field position for the Eagles. It's just what Tortorella wanted. <coughs> see right there, IEP football. Motto on the back of the shirts, all in. All in for this season. Travis under center. Giving it to the fullback. 27, Mac Mikulski. Get a little breathing room back there for Travis and his offense. Mac will now come out of the game. Switching up the personnel. Stanley Jackson now coming in. Travis now, like you said, Mike, he has some breathing room now. Travis back to pass. Zings it out to Mike Sweetser. Good coverage, good play by the DBs. So Kai Turner was there to make the tackle for this Crimson Hawks defense. Third down. <coughs> I mean, stop him here. There could be a huge blow to their momentum. Just got to hold him here. Converts to offense. Wilcox in motion. Travis back to pass. Looking for... Vaughn, Vaughn gets the first down, a lot of breathing room. And 
that'll be a first down. Justin, well done coming out of the defense as well as DeAndre Easterling. Travis, fake handoff to Vaughn, fires to Cameron Green, and the flags come throwing in. Defensive pass interference. That's to Kai Turner. Yeah, he grabbed his face mask, grabbed his shoulder. He just kind of grabbed him everywhere. Yeah, you definitely can't do that. First down for the Eagles. You know, penalties just kill you. We just haven't seen too many, though. Haven't seen too many, but a decent amount. We saw six penalties most of the game. Four for the Ashland Eagles for 37 yards, and three for the Crimson Hawks. They're about to get it added on right now. It's probably about 30 yards for that. All right, a new set of downs for the Eagles. Tornowski giving it to 22. Luke Ogie. And that's a play you don't see from the Crimson Hawks today, just right up the gun. They're normally very good at stuffing the A, B, and C gap, but not on that play right there. They opened up the hole for Ogie and took it right up the gun. <coughs> yeah, they just got to fill those holes. Just got to fill, 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 just charge right in there. And we have a, quite a few new linebackers compared to last year. Motion for Travis. Travis under center with eye formation, giving it to Ogie. Ogie to the outside. And he finished when he started getting that first down for his Ashland Eagles. And that'll make it third. Make it first down. First and ten. Thursday night game underneath the lights. Could be a good omen, could be a bad omen. Guess we'll just have to see it to find out. Travis, play action, rolling out. Hit as he's thrown to Cameron Green. Drilled by number 50 right there, Damon Lloyd. Whew, for the incomplete pass. Give a thumbs up saying he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough hit. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. That, that, that one kind of made me cringe a little bit. You heard the crowd go, oh. Coming on the field now is Mike Sweetser. I would key in on him, number 88. Looking for the tight end dump pass. Second and 10. Yeah. Gives it to Ogie. Ogie stuffed. For a minimal game, I believe that was a gain of two right there. Third down. Third and eight. 23-23, less than 10 minutes to go. It's getting down to crunch time, Mike. Travis looking deep in the middle, looking for his man, Mike, almost intercepted. Nick Amendola almost had that one right off his fingertips. Oh, that, that would have been a great play to see, but it is now fourth and eight from the right around midfield. And Petropolo back to receive. And once again with a fake punt. Looking for a block from the defense. I don't know, saw a play from the sideline. Could be a fake now. High kick, and good hang time on Petropola that one. Petropolo signaling to stay away. Into the end zone again. 
and that will be a switch to the IUP offense, looking to end this tie, trying to get some points on the board. 23-23, nine minutes, and here we have the offense getting ready to head on out. Walt Pagis, as you see right there in the sling, he's been out. It will be out for another four weeks, you said, Mike, or so? Three to four weeks. That's what we're expecting. I think they're doing pretty well with Allen right in there. Lenny Williams giving it to Samir. A quick fumble behind the line and huge loss. Possibly a 15-plus loss. Second and 24, definitely not what you want to see to start off a drive for the Crimson Hawks with only eight minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Trying to get some spare space for Lenny. Samir kind of makes up for the yardage right there. Gained about seven or eight there for Samir Bullock. Just trying to get a little bit of yards back to give Lenny Williams a little bit of help. Third and long. Third and 15 for Lenny Williams. Lenny Williams, back to pass, has some breathing room. Good blocking by the line, guns it deep. No one was open except for a <laughs> defensive back for the Eagles. Yeah, good thing he overshot him. He was trying to go for JoJo Gauze right down the middle, but JoJo doesn't have quite enough speed to make that catch. Number nine, Dale Irby, Dale Irby was on the coverage there. A little bit slow to get up. Maybe had the wind knocked out of him. Going for the ball. And fourth down. And Dale Irby will come out. Now, Trevante Jackson will come in to receive. Another good punt. Taking it down to the 30, a net punt of about 60, 50 yards on the play. 7.30 left to go in the game. Underneath the lights, what could be better than this? I don't know, Vince. <laughs> well, it's anyway, it's first week of classes here at IUP. And I think this is a bit of, I don't know, some after-study relief to come watch the football game. Speaking classes, Vince, so how are they going for you so far? Uh, pretty good, pretty interesting. Uh, Going to be honest, could we go for a 4.0 this semester? I don't know. Oh, mazel tov to you. There you go. You know, <laughs> good job. Congratulations. Hopefully, you know, still a little too early to call that one. But uh, I like your uh, like to gamble. bold you just, prediction. You just gamble and you and you got to be bold about the predictions. First and ten. Giving it to Vaughn. Vaughn is stopped at the line. Second and seven for Vaughn. Stopped by number 50. I believe that was Damon Lloyd on the stop right there. Along with Vaughn in the backfield is 27, the fullback, Mac Mikulski. Second and seven. And stacked trips, tossing it out to Vaughn. Vaughn finding a few blocks. First hit by number 10, that is Max Redfield on the play, bringing him down with the help of number 92, Jamal Averitz. Make that third and one. <laughs> Big play right here. IEP Crimson Hawks trying to get the turnover, trying to stop him on third down. With motion for Wilcox. Giving it to Vaughn. Vaughn is tackled in the backfield by the defensive line. 
was at number 68. I believe that was Justin Weldon on the stop there. Bringing up a fourth and three for the Ashland Eagles. Justin Weldon, I don't know what he did, but maybe he put on some butter before the game and slipped right through that hole and it took down Vaughn. Justin Weldon with the help of Takai Turner. And they're going to go for it. They're keeping the offense on the field, fourth and three. Will Cox in motion, possibly the same exact play. Mikulski. Mikulski up the middle. That is a first down for Mikulski and Travis Ronowski. And coming out of the game is DeAndre Easterling coming in. Is 55, Diamond Jones. Travis is now at shotgun. Passing it out to number three. Couldn't get, couldn't take him down. J.R. Stevens couldn't quite get him, but think. Thanks as lucky stars that Max Redfield was there to finish the job for him. Because that was would have been a touchdown. Jamie Hentz on the reception. This is a arm tackle. It wasn't even a complete tackle. I don't know what J.R. Stevens was doing, but it's first in town for the Eagles. Five minutes left in this ball game. Travis giving it to Vaughn. Vaughn right up the middle. Vaughn finding a few more yards than he planned to. Solid game of 15 yards on the field for Vaughn. First and ten. I don't know, Vaughn, he's been coming out in late game. Haven't seen too much of Samir, Mike. Don't worry. He'll be back. Don't worry about Samir. I think we had a big fumble by Samir on that last drive. He'll be all right. Give oh, him man, I believe. I believe. All right. I believe, too. First and ten, this defense needs to get it rolling, needs to get the stop. Traps take it, gives it to Vaughn. I think the Eagles just trying to waste the time out. So whenever the Crimson Hawks do get the ball. Tick, tick, tick. Got to watch that clock through the defense here. Wilcox still on the field along with Jamie Hentz for the Eagles. Four minutes, four minutes and five seconds left in the game. Travis's favorite key, key player, Mike Schweister. Give it to Vaughn. Vaughn keeps powering through these runs. Less than four to go. Deep in Crimson Hawk territory. Third and two. Vaughn will now come off. Mikulski, the fullback, will come on the field along with Cameron Green. Luke Ogie in the backfield in I formation. Travis with twins on his right. Travis will give it to Ogie. And that will be close. Straight up the middle, and he got the first down. They keep pounding the ball down in the throat. First and ten. Tarnowski now with trips. First and ten, new set of downs. Gives it to Ogie. Ogie going up the outside. Tell you what, that is one thing I've noticed that the Ashland offensive line has really taken control of this game. They are you playing the Crimson Hawks defense at will. They're just moving them around with ease. Two minutes, 30 seconds to go. They are wasting the clock up for the Hawks offense. We need to get fresh bodies in there. And I think they're bringing up goal line. Man coverage right now. 
toss him out to Ogie on second down. Ogie hit hard. Hit hard on the outside by Damon Lloyd. Damon, Nick, and Nick, Damon Lloyd and Nick Amendola on the stop there. Damon Lloyd, you hit him hard. Minute 57, time out. And we have the defensive coordinator coming on the field. And Tortorella just tell them to stay at home, stay on their man, and just trying to get the, get the ball back in the Crimson Hawk hands. And we will be right back with the end of IUP versus Ashland right after this. Okay. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of words going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Are you ready? Action team. Action. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? It's hard to explain. It just became home. There are hundreds of majors and programs, bachelor's degrees to PhDs, small classes and faculty that really get to know you. Amazing internships and everywhere, programs that help to find a job that is right for you. It's what IUP is about, a commitment to your success. See it for yourself. Visit us, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. Back here at George P. Miller Stadium. Tarnowski in the gun, gets smacked and hit, and has an incomplete pass, stopping the clock. One minute, 52 seconds left in this game, and that is bringing up a fourth down for the Ashland Eagles. And it looks like the field goal unit will come on. You know, they, if they get three points right here, they're up. Make it 26-23, could go home with a W. IUP trying their hardest, trying to get the fans Tarnowski the into holder. the game. We're going to see what happens here. The fans are getting rowdy. <laughs> Snap and kick. And it's, it's, blocked. Blocked. And it it's blocked. blocked! It's blocked! It's blocked! And it's still 23-23. The IUP offense the taking the field. Second blocked kick on the game. The first one was a blocked extra point attempt and the last one was just a blocked field goal to take the lead in the fourth quarter with a minute 45 left and these crowd, this crowd is on their feet cheering on their Crimson Hawks. What an incredible finish to this game. Whatever happens, incredible finish. 145 left to go Mike. There's a lot of time left. I don't know. Lenny can make a huge play happen. All they need is a field goal. And that's the thing, Lenny Williams and the offense need to realize they cannot let the defense down. Such a big play like that, you cannot let your defense and your fans, classmates, teachers, everyone, you cannot let them people, you cannot let them down right now. First and 10, possibly last drive for Lenny for the game. Lenny giving it to Samir. Samir right up the middle, finding a few more blockers. Possibly a face mask fumble. Crimson Hawks recovers. Breath of fresh air for the fans. Mike up here is holding his breath. Smear, don't do that one to me. I don't like that one. Hold the ball. Second fumble of the game, Samir. You need to get your head back in the game. You know, this is where they separate the men from the boys right here with a minute 25 left. Samir got the first down. Lenny back to pass with the Twins, giving it to Jojo God. Jojo God's second reception of the game. Gets, Jojo gets about seven yards right there on the quick little out route. Lenny Williams finding him real quick. Smart play, Jojo, by stepping out of bounds. One timeout left for IUP, three for Ashland. Second down, Lenny with trips. Lenny looking, dumps it out to Samir. Big block by Allen Wright. No flag on the play, clean hit, clean block. Pretty good block on that. 
one minute, seven seconds left. George P. Miller Stadium. The game is tied 23-23. IUP, how do you want to be remembered in this one? You gotta get farther enough to get Dylan Sarka in field goal position. Lenny up. Oh, in the hands. In the hands of Swanee Brown. That's the second time Shawnee Brown couldn't bring the pass in from Lenny Williams. Second down. Second and ten. Double twins once again for Williams. Lenny seems to enjoy the double twins. Seems more successful in this formation. A minute 02 left to go. Lenny, back to pass, firing. Complete pass. Cole Pugh's good catch. That's what he can do. That's how they got the first couple touchdowns. Dink and dunk passes, get down the field. Time is not your friend right now, but you need about 20, 20, 30 more yards to get this into his range. No huddle, quick to Samir. Samir, that's it. Through that's the it. outside, that's Samir. It. Keeps turning the feet, and I think that's field goal position for Dylan Sarka. Hurry up offense right here. Run, let's go, run! So they're wanting to spike the ball really quick. Trying to get ready. He will spike it. Make it 29 seconds to go. This is crunch time for Lenny. This is a game for the ages. And that's what that is in Crimson Hawks football history. Second and ten. The crowd is getting into it. Even Vinny's standing up. There we go, Vince. Stretch those legs. Lenny Williams back to pass. Throws to Allen Wright. He could get out of bounds. Nope, the ball's still moving. Tick-tock, tick-tock, 20 seconds left. One timeout left. <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> 10 seconds. Allen Wright needs to get into position. Drop it. Keep it short. Keep it short. Keep it short. <laughs> four seconds to go. Incomplete pass. Four seconds left in this game. Ball at about the Crimson Hawks. 30 yard, I'm sorry, the Eagles 30 yard line. What they're going to bring on the field goal units. Here we go. Everyone is on their feet in George P. Miller Stadium. People are getting loud, but you need to be quiet so we can focus. Here we go. Dylan for Dylan. Four seconds left, and a timeout was taken. Ison, the kicker. I don't mind, Vince. That's one big thing. I do not believe in icing the kicker. It's proven <laughs> some kickers, yeah, they miss, but the clutch ones, the clutch <laughs> ones are the ones that make it. And Dylan Sarka is one of those kickers. He will make this kick. Ashton doing everything they can. Try to keep this game all tied up. Four seconds to go. Action versus IUP. Mike, if I told you this is what the outcome would be, if this four seconds left all tied up, 23-23, what would you what, what would you say? I would have said maybe 46-46 all tied up. <laughs> but we're going to see. We'll see what happens right here. First Thursday night football underneath the lights in two years here at George P. Miller Stadium. Are this could define the season for IUP. And another timeout. Another timeout. This one taking by Ashland. You know, Vince, everyone's thinking tonight, man, I have class in the morning. <laughs> How late can we stay here? Are we can keep the game going? Can we ice the game right now? Ashton has one more timeout after this. Well, they already used their timeout, so it would be a penalty if they tried to use it again. Mike, this is this is <laughs> this is clutch time for Dylan Sarka. Dylan Sarka down on the field, talking to the kicking coach. 
He's saying, you got this. Just, just put it in. 3,235 people staring at the right leg of Dylan Sarka. <laughs> Dylan Sarka getting ready to tee up on those uprights. Four seconds to go. Dylan Sarka. He has the ending for this game. Petropola holding with the snap. Sarka is up. Can it make it in? And it's in there. It's through the uprights. It's through the uprights. It's through the uprights. And that's a win for the first game of the season. Underneath the lights in two years. IUP Crimson Hawks with the W. 1-0. Ranked ninth in the country. Dylan Sarka. How about it? Starting off the season, 1-0. What an incredible way to go. IUP, Crimson Hawks, with a beautiful kick by Dylan Sarka. And he is down on the field. He is humble right now. Everyone is congratulating him. Handshakes going for both the teams. A 46-yard field goal to win the game, starting the season off. Dylan Sark, a great play, clutch move. And I think, I think that's the optimism Walt Pegues is talking about. The whole team's optimistic about this season. He's optimistic. I mean, we're just all working as a team. 46 yards, you know, Vinny, for this being D2, that is a long kick in Division II football. Mike, I gotta say, I mean, Samir in the late game, we didn't see too much. He had a fumble, and is more Lenny on his uh, on his passing game. And your final stats for the game: Lenny Williams was 22 and 38 for 230 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Samir Bullock on the ground, 25 attempts for 200 yards, averaging eight yards. Did have the two fumbles, but hey, we got the win. That is all right. And Allen Wright. Nine receptions, 102 yards on the game. Congratulations to these Crimson Hawks. And now we're going to set it down to Emma McCarthy for our sideline report. And maybe in a minute we'll go... And we're going to go down to Emma here in a quick minute. But what a way for head coach Paul Tortorella to start off his IUP coaching career with a 1-0 start. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan Sarka on top of the team. Dylan Sarka, have a ball. Send it down to Emma McCarthy for its summer report. Competition. Sum it up for me. Well, it's, it's, it's almost hard to put it words. We had an Ohio kid beat them on a kick. I told them, take it home to Ohio. What, what do you take away from a game like this? It was hard fought both sides. Both teams had momentum gains, momentum losses. What's your general takeaway? I mean, I mean it was a great game. I mean, it went back and forth. Neither team quit. I mean, I mean, they played great, too. I mean, it was a great game, two good football teams. I mean, and this is the first game of the year. To, to have both teams play the way they played on the first game of the year is uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. One point of curiosity, you did not have Lenny run many plays with him using his legs, which he was great at last year. Was that by the... Ah! But again, going back, to Lenny did not, he didn't have any design plays for Lenny. Well, we don't really need him to run it. We got great receivers uh, that we want to get the ball to. We got great running backs. Oh, <laughs> Best coach in the world, bro. You know, we got great running backs. I mean, we don't really need Lenny to run it anymore. You know, we can put the ball in our running backs' hands. We got great receivers that he can get the ball. You know, Lenny now is a quarterback. 
In the past, he was an athlete playing quarterback. That's an interesting way to characterize him. Any particular players that stood out or any particular uh, units? I mean, you know, I'm a defensive guy, and and our second half defensively was out, outstanding. You know, I don't I don't know. Maybe they kicked the field goal. I, I don't even know what they did late. And, and, and uh, you know, I think they might have had 23 at half. I, I guess we shut them out in the second half. Well, the guy that gave you the Gatorade bath was one of the defensive players. Yeah, in the game. He, he played great. And he's he's a four year player. I mean, he's never redshirted. This is his fourth year playing. We expect him to do that. You know, Ellen Wright last year really complained a lot about the fact that he was not used as well or as much as he thought. But you certainly got a lot of use out of him tonight. Oh, he, he's special with the ball in his hands. He, and, and he's come a long way. He's, he's matured a lot. And you know, he's become a leader, actually. Well, they got a leader right now. His name is Paul Tortorella. <laughs> well, I want you to go be able to celebrate with the players. It was a great game. Congratulations for, again, being undefeated in your first outgoing. We'll see you back here next week for another Congratulations, win. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. What a great start to this season. All right, back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Emma McCarthy. What a great game with IUP coming out on top, 26-23. I'm Vincent Lowry with your second season as your color commentator. Vinny, thanks so much for having me. Michael Gribna, we'll see you folks next week. This is the IUP Crimson Hawks Sports Network. Have a good night.